Live from WSLS, this is 10 News at 6, working for you. Now at 6, another deadly shooting in the Star City. That was just really heartbreaking to see something like so close, you know, to where you live. The one thing that has neighbors on edge. Plus, this makes our job harder. COVID-19 concerns, especially in Central Virginia. The two reasons behind this urgent plea to the public. And a constant craving. I am addicted to technology. How certain types of digital media are putting you at risk. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Lindsay Ward. I'm Brittany McGraw. John Carlin is off tonight. People in Northwest Roanoke are on edge after an overnight shooting at a gas station left one person dead and sent another to the hospital. It's the third homicide in the Star City so far this month. 10 News reporter Courtney Lockie has been following the story all day and joins us live from where it all unfolded after talking with neighbors. Guys, it's been nearly 20 hours since the first shots were fired at this gas station and the scene is just now clearing. Tonight, investigators aren't the only ones who are still searching for answers. When Mike Pelton rolled up to open shop at Four Day Tire Store. Basically what I saw was the uh, Police line over there. He was stopped in his tracks. I saw the little flags in the parking lot. So, you know, I said, well, somebody got shot. It was just after midnight Wednesday when police were called out to the Shell gas station on Melrose Avenue. When they showed up, they found a woman who'd been shot and killed in a car and another man at a nearby business who was seriously hurt. It's going to happen no matter where you are. I've had it happen in front of my own house. Part of what has neighbors so concerned Police haven't arrested anyone and they don't have any suspects. It was really tragic to see something like that. Monique Bishop lives in the area. She says she stopped by like many, hoping to learn what led to the night's deadly events. I saw some people sitting on the sidewalk. You know, they looked visibly upset. And that was just really heartbreaking to see something like so close, you know, to where you live. Still, those like Pelton and Bishop say they're not letting the night leave them fearful and hope others don't either. This whole side of town, they get a bad rap. It's, they're good people over here. Everybody that comes in here, and you know, you can check us out or whatever, what people got to say, and you see what the people are about. We're told that the man who was shot was taken to the hospital. Still no word on how he's doing. As far as the woman, that name won't come to us until the family has been notified. As usual, if you have any information, go ahead and give police a call. Reporting live tonight in Roanoke, Courtney Lonke, 10 News, working for you. A Danville man who killed his baby will spend the next 25 years behind bars. Antoine Jefferson was sentenced for second degree murder and child abuse. The 23 year old previously admitted to shaking his three month old son because he would not stop crying. Turning now to your forecast where we are tracking a chance for showers and storms. Chief Meteorologist Jeff Hanowitz is here to show us who is at risk. Jeff? Yeah, the New River Valley, Mountain Empire, and Highlands have the best chance to see these showers and thunderstorms here through the mid-evening hours. You'll notice that certainly areas along and to the west of I-81 seeing the worst of the weather right now. We've got heavier downpours out across parts of Bland and Grayson counties, and you had a little further to the north. We've got a nasty little thunderstorm right along the Craig, Botetourt, and Allegheny County line. That uh, heavy rain does extend a little further north into Covington, so it's a wet go of it right now, right along Interstate 64. Uh, in between Covington and Newcastle, that's where we are seeing the strongest thunderstorm right now. Uh, could actually have some pea-sized hail in that cell as well. Evening planner showing temperatures falling into the middle 70s by around 9. As we head, say, towards 9 o'clock, the chance for rain will start to diminish. And the wedge is in play for us on Thursday. That means for us, uh, temperatures are going down tomorrow. We're mainly in the 70s. A couple of folks may make it into the lower 80s. We're going to have abundant cloud cover on Thursday with not much sunshine and we could also have some scattered downpours as we're able to tap into a little bit of tropical moisture due to a cold front overhead. Lindsay. Lynchburg is seeing an alarming increase of COVID-19 cases and city leaders are calling it a dire situation. 10 News reporter Tim Harfman breaks down the numbers on how it's impacting hospitals, schools and city employees makes our job harder and harder. Health and city leaders are pleading for the public to stop the spread of COVID-19. Lynchburg is reporting the third highest daily case count in the Commonwealth, according to Virginia's Department of Health. 
In a news conference Wednesday, Centra Health says Lynchburg General Hospital has 101 COVID patients, nearly a third of the facility's bed space. Of those patients, 20 are in ICU, 18 of which are ventilated. As COVID cases increase, so do fatalities. In August, we had 35 total deaths. In September, as of today, only halfway through the month, we're already at 26. This comes as the Central Virginia Health District says the vaccination rate of the Hill City and and its four surrounding counties is below 45%, with Lynchburg having the lowest of the five localities, 39%. With the recent FDA approval, we have seen a number of city employees um, coming forward who do want to be vaccinated. They're urging people to get vaccinated and wear masks indoors, regardless of vaccination status. Tim Harfman, 10 News, working for you. The hospital in Martinsville is operating at disaster levels due to rising COVID cases. City leaders say there's limited bed capacity at Sova Health. They're asking people to avoid visiting the emergency room unless it's absolutely necessary. Due to the pandemic, many school districts are facing staffing issues. Pulaski County is one in our area and our region that needs substitute teachers to keep students in the classroom. We're told dozens of teachers had to call out because of infection or exposure last week. The issues we're dealing with are not short term as we had hoped they would be at the beginning of the year. This is you know spilling over into September and, and looking forward to October now. We're still dealing with some of those same issues. District leaders are considering bringing back several incentive programs they used last year to bring in more staff. In our world today, we're constantly glued to our TV screens, our cell phones, or our tablets. But this digital addiction can have serious consequences for our mental health. New at 6, 10 News reporter Lindsay Kennett talked with a local expert about the risks. Social media, television, video games. No matter the medium, digital technology is intertwined with our lives to the point where some can't live without the screen. I am addicted to technology. I think everybody's addicted to some kind of technology. Yes. I crave the interaction that I have on my phone with people that I've never maybe met in person, but I've met them digitally. Dr. Robert Trestman, Carillion Clinic's chair of psychiatry, says biologically we crave the instant gratification. It stimulates our brain's basic reward system, dopamine, so we go back for more. Technology is inadvertently and thoughtfully um, made use of the underlying biology to create very addictive tools. These digital addictions have consequences. Binge watching TV is more passive, but constantly scrolling, liking, or sharing on social media apps or playing video games are so interactive. They can raise our stress hormones and increase the risk for anxiety and depression. Trestman says the pandemic only complicated things and the consequences are still unknown. We're way ahead in terms of technology, way ahead of either the ethics or the consequences socially. If you want to cut back, Trustman says monitor your screen time. Prioritize time for work, school, exercise, or spending time with family and friends. Then scroll with the time left. If you prioritize the important things first, you're going to reduce dramatically the risk of addiction. Lindsay Kennett, 10 News, working for you. Still ahead, making a difference. How thousands of people who attended the Blue Ridge Rock Festival are now helping families in need. Plus, an out-of-this-world mission. The special reason why one local duo is visiting Florida for tonight's SpaceX launch. Right here between us is a live look from Florida, where in just a few hours, four Americans are set to blast off on the first private space flight. 10 News reporter McKinley Struther caught up with two men from our area who will witness this historic moment. The countdown is on. Writing the narrative of human spaceflight right now, in under two hours, four ordinary people, Jared Isaacman, C.N. Proctor, Haley Arsenault, and Chris Simbrowski, will go to space. And two ordinary men from Roanoke will be standing by in awe. I'm probably going to be hollering and hooping and jumping up and down a whole lot and trying to hold the camera really steady. George Clements, by day, is a floral designer and shop owner. Today, he's a witness to history. I had always wanted to visit and is, uh, had never made the trip. Well, to celebrate his dad, Leroy Clements' 86th birthday, he made the trip to the Kennedy Space Center. 
had model rockets when I was a kid. My dad helped me uh, build those, uh, build them and launch them. Tonight, they'll watch four civilians go to space. While there, they will collect data on how space impacts the average person's heart activity, sleep and blood, as well as changes in behavior and cognitive performance. Being a 1960 model, <laughs> as I am, um, I have always, of course, been, I was always in front of the TV for all the NASA flights and uh, for all of the Apollo missions. From his living room TV in the 60s to Cape Canaveral, Inspiration4 will launch sound waves sure to offer George, his dad, and everyone in its view the feeling of a lifetime. I'm McKinley Strother, 10 News, working for you. Your local weather authority, always watching and tracking for you from the JES Weather Center. As McKinley said, T minus two hours. That's right. Tonight at 8.02, the Inspiration 4 launch is expected to launch from Cape Canaveral and head offshore into the Atlantic Ocean, offshore of North Carolina. Now, what to know? The sunset is at 727, so it's going to be relatively dark at 8.02. We could also have some clouds around, too, so that may impact your viewing. But if you're able to not get clouds overhead, that would mean a vapor trail could be visible and you want to look to the southeast eastern sky. All right, the radar showing that there are clouds around and there are showers and thunderstorms around into the mountains, highlands south into the New River Valley Mountain Empire. That's where we're seeing the highest concentration of wet weather. We showed you that uh, strong thunderstorm just south of Covington. You'll notice also some heavier rain being reported out across Mountain Lake in Giles County. Parisburg, you just had some heavier rain push in. That rain has now shifted to the most or for the most part to the north of you. Also seeing some heavier downpours along I-77 going from Land County South into Wythe County. All this moving northeast 20 to 25 miles per hour. Culprit for this a cold front. This cold front is going to be crossing us slowly over the next 24 to 36 hours. Still going to be a weather maker for us even as we head into tomorrow. The trend will be for the showers and thunderstorms around right now to diminish as soon as the sun goes down. So by 9, 10 o'clock, I think we're for the most part looking pretty dry. Some fog may develop later tonight. Then on Thursday, we're starting off with some clouds, maybe even a stray shower heading into the afternoon. Clouds hold tight and we're going to have a better chance for these hit or miss showers and thunderstorms. Just like tonight, the activity will start to wane later into the evening. Then Friday looks to be another day where we have more clouds and sunshine. Friday morning, a stray shower, but by Friday afternoon, you guessed it, a better chance for some scattered showers and thunderstorms. Want to take you into the tropics. We're watching Nicholas still, but that is going to be dissipating here pretty soon, but still going to bring a lot of rain towards the Gulf Coast. Three other areas to watch. One just offshore of the United States, the other two areas just offshore of Africa. The next names on the list, Odette, Peter, and Rose. Temperatures right now 83 Roanoke, 85 Danville and Lynchburg, 60 though in Withville because you've gotten wet, 75 in Blacksburg. Simply put, it's cooler where you have clouds and rain. It's warmer where you've seen a little more sunshine and stay dry. 60 to 68 for overnight lows tonight with the evening showers and thunder showers tapering off. Three day zone by zone forecast showing highs in the NRV for the next three days or so. Upper 70s, lower 80s. For the highlands, you're going to have some hit or miss thunder showers Thursday through Saturday. And for south side, you're looking at highs low to mid 80s Thursday and Friday, but you bump up into the mid to upper 80s by Saturday. For Lynchburg, hit or miss thunder showers Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Then we're dry Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. And for Roanoke, upper 70s to near 80 tomorrow. Then temperatures rebound into the mid to upper 80s Saturday, all the way through Wednesday of next week. News and notes for you. Martinsville keeping the Saturday night spring race and the final race before the championship October 30th. Urban Meyer to USC. No chance. And Saquon Barkley listed as questionable for Thursday night football versus Washington. NBC Nightly News is coming up next. We will see you back here at 7.